You know what happens when you take two beer cans and squash them together? About what just happened between Sterling and Dale Jr. Oh. Dale took the he took the pop top off Sterling's car not once but twice. Just slammed the door on him. This bud's for you, Silver Bullet. That's it. <laughs> wow. But I'm gonna tell you what, Sterling Marlin in that 40 car, like like Dale Earnhardt Jr., he got that track position because he's one of those cars that pitted on lap five for fuel up there in the third place. Remember, a year and a half ago, Sterling is the one that got Dodge their first win in their comeback to Winston Cup right here at Michigan. More on Sterling Marlin, who runs the outside of Newman for second. Down to Speedway Illustrated's Dick Bergeron. Well, thanks, Mike. He has just heard in his ear a little reminder that the number 12 car and the number 40, a 20 car may well still be mad at each other. Ryan Newman would not give Stewart his lap back at Dover a couple of weeks ago, so Sterling has been told, be careful around those guys. They may still be mad at each other. <laughs> may? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty, it's pretty obvious that they haven't forgotten. Now, whether they're mad at each other, I couldn't say about that, but they haven't forgotten. On the left, battle for seventh place, Kevin Harvick. He was past Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I'm going to tell you what, he's been slowly marching forward. They came up here and tested for a day, nothing race runs. This could be the best that Kevin Harvick has looked in several races in that Goodrich car. Whoa, Newman! That, that is a big-time engine explosion right there, big time. He needs to get that thing woed up and get out of it. That's oil. It's, that's oil fire is what that is. And you see he's still running well over 100 miles per hour with the engine not running. He can't see. Boy, great job by the spotter to guide him to safety. That was a good job. You can see all the oil running out from under the car. That's what's that's what's burning. The inhaling all that smoke and not being able to see is the tough part. So John Erickson. John Erickson. Yep. He's the general manager at Penske and has worked with Rusty for a long, long time since moving over there. He used to work for Pontiac Motor Division and he is on the horn with Ryan and got him right to the right spot. And and, and Ryan had the presence of mind to not jump. You can't just slam on the brakes. Got all that oil coming out under the tires. You jump on the brakes, you're going to spin the thing out and back it up in the fence. Then you are going to be in big trouble. Coming off turn two, halfway Bigger down trouble. the back stretch. There she goes. I've been, I mean, I just don't know how these guys week in and week out turn these things 92 plus, 9200 RPM plus every week. Now here's where Erickson's role is so important. We all know that the safety equipment can't move until the cars come down to pace car speed and have taken the caution flag. So he directs Newman to the fire truck. My, did you see the fire up inside oh. the car? I mean, as we were looking at that, the whole right side of the car is engulfed in flames. Look, look at the dashboard in that car. Buddy, now, that's getting hot. Now, pretty much all of our leaders are coming to pit road. This caution really, to me, is a big break for Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip, but their strategy paid off because they were first and fourth. Dick Burke. Sterling Marlin had pitted on lap five. He had taken fuel only at that point. So on this pit stop, he's going to take four tires, going to pack as much gas in it as he can. To Matt. And the 97, a Kurt Busch in, entered pit road in third place. An air pressure adjustment. He was a little bit tight, Steve Burns. Matt, no adjustments on the number 20 car of Tony Stewart. Mike Lingerfeld and Todd Foster changing tires. No adjustments. He's got a clear shit out of his pit, but he gets just around the 11 of Jeffrey Bodine. Harvick and Junior might have bumped just a little bit as Junior tried to clear out of his pit. They had been battling for seventh place before the caution. Well, this is another great pit road, just like we saw at Pocono. You got lots of room here. You got great big, big pick box. Whoa, that's hard to say. Pit, pit, box. pit boxes. And let's see the race off pit road. Here you see Sterling Marlin in 40 car. He'll win the race. Tony Stewart in 20. But look at this right here coming up. Sterling Marlin, the 15 car. They had a great run. Great pit stop. Look at that crew reaction. They win the race off pit road. Marlin is going to thank his lucky stars. That's what he's going to do on this pit stop because just the lap before that caution flag, he hit his radio and said he thought he had a flat. Then came the caution. What a lucky break. Sterling Marlin is going to take four tires on this automobile. This is the same car that led more laps than any other car last week in Pocono. Sterling finished sixth there. Very disappointed in the way it ended up. Hopes he's going to do a whole lot better today. To that. Three DNFs here at Michigan in the time that he has finished. Kurt Busch came home with a 10th place finish. This will be a four-tire change as Scott Radel hits the jack on the left side. Tires going on to Steve Burns. Matt, at the last 
second, they decided to change all four tires on the 20 car of Tony Stewart and make a small chassis adjustment. He heads back down pit road. Marlon's going to win the race off the pit lane over Kurt Busch. You know, there may have been someone that changed just two tires, but pretty much everybody I could see and watch, they changed four tires. But, yeah, like you say, Sterling Marlin in the 40, he will win the race off pit road again. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> You know, this is about the biggest lead anybody's had today. A quarter, a half, a second, no more. I'll tell you what, this is our leader, Sterling Marlin in the 40 and Tony Stewart in the 20. We got a battle for the lead right here going down the backstretch. But, yeah, Robert Reiser told me we'll be lucky if we run in the top 20. He's been lucky all season. I, you guys kill Larry, you and Jeff, y'all kill me. You go talk to those crew chiefs, they don't know. They just, they, they, they just not they telling just, us. They just tell y'all anything, like fuel mileage and... You gotta talk to the driver, man. Whoa, new leader and a crossover move. Tony Stewart led this race for about three seconds, and Marlon went right back after him. What do you think, Hammond? I mean, don't you think you ought to talk to the driver? Why? You're gonna you're gonna lie to us anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be no different. At least Robbie was being honest. He was working on his race car. He wasn't happy with it. And Larry will tell you, and weren't jerking our legs or pulling our legs on that deal because they were working our race car. Dick Bergman. In June of 1996, Sterling Marlin led the most laps in the companion to this event, but he needed one extra stop for fuel, and that extra stop cost him the race. So this morning I asked his engine tuners, Tony Santana Cola, have you sacrificed any horsepower at all in exchange for fuel economy? Because this racetrack, Michigan, is known more than any others for fuel economy being important. Santana Cola looked at me as if I was completely out of my mind, and he said, not one the horsepower. <laughs> Sterling Marlin, our leader, sixth three times in 2003, Bristol, Talladega, and Pocono, but for the second week in a row now, he has led the most laps. And what you're watching, 150,000 strong, is him putting a spanking on these guys right now. And let me tell you the position he has moved himself in. With this last pit stop, should we stay green, coming with about 35, 40 laps to go, he has almost a six-second lead. You do the math. He can take four tires and not relinquish the lead, even the guys that take two tires. And trust me, you got a race car that good, the last thing you want to do is mess the setup it with just two right side tires. Well, that's uh, 20 bonus points for Marlin in the last uh, two weeks here. Now Sterling Marlin has stretched his lead out to almost six and a half seconds. He's consistently three tenths quicker than anybody out there on the racetrack. It was Marlin who gave Dodge their first win since they returned to Winston Cup racing at the start of the 2001 season. He won here that year in August. It was the first Dodge Winston Cup win since 1977 in November, Neil Bonnet. And there's the caution Bill Elliott did not want to see. There's some debris there on the backstretch. We think we saw Michael Waltrip in the 15, and Napa car actually run over it. But if he has a tire problem, he'll be coming to pit road to get four tires anyhow. Well, Shirley Marlin, no surprise, is going to take four tires. He has already heard from his spotter, Lauren Rainier, who has told him, stop exactly on the sign when the sign touches the windshield. This, the most critical stop of all. Shirley skids to a stop to get those four tires. No adjustments to the race car other than minor tire pressure adjustments. That's all they've done to this car all day long. To Matt. A great entry by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Looking for a four-tire change. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear. He was a little tight in that last run. the car was still pretty good to Steve Burns. They pull a spring rubber out of the left rear spring for Tony Stewart. Four tires. He's away right in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Leave Jeff Gordon and that 24 group, Robbie Loomis, they're going to win the battle off pit road, but that 32 car, Ricky Craven, they had a great pit stop. They'll go out third. 40 car was a little slow on the right rear, and uh, that, that cost him getting out ahead of Gordon. So far, Get ready. Great, great, great. 38 laps to go. Bill Elliott tail end of the lead lap as he did not pit. Sterling didn't go, guys. Something happened. Sterling is falling back. I don't know if there's something wrong with the car, a flat tire. I'm not sure what his problem is. And, and Elliott's in trouble. Well, Bill didn't take tires, Mike, and he right. rode around there on those old tires. I was worried about that. Yeah, he's going to fall all the way back to about mid-pack before he can get back in line. You know, I'm not sure. Maybe Sterling just missed a gear and... and uh, Something certainly happened to his car. It looks like he's up to speed now. Thing either loaded up or he missed a gear or something uh, happened to it. And Jeff Gordon tries to give this field the goodbye look. 
He's got that see you later alligator look to it right now. Yeah, Sterling Marlin went all the way back to 14th position from second. First, we'll see the restart. See what happened to Sterling Marlin on the right of your screen. Live action on the left. Yo, based on what I see now, Mike, it looks like he just couldn't get it in gear. Like he had a problem with the transmission. There he goes. He, did, he, he can't go. Boy, nice move by Craven to cut low and clear him. Dick Bergeron. With Lee McCall, Shirley Marlin's crew chief, what happened on that restart, Lee? Well, I'm really not sure. I don't know if he spun the tires or missed a gear or what, but, uh, you know, there's still 35 laps here left, and uh, I think we've got enough car we can get back to the front. Has he not said anything? No, I think he's concentrating right now getting back to the front, so we'll see what we got. All right, good luck with it. He's running 13th. Darrell, how much time do you have when something like that happens right in front of you on a restart? Well, it's just all instincts. You're coming up through the gears, and you just are so fortunate you don't ram that guy. It's uh, that guy, Sterling did the right thing. He faded to the right, got up high all the way, and gave guys the bottom to get around him. Well, the first six cars on the lead lap did not pit. Jeff Gordon, Kurt Busch, Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, Rusty Wallace, and Sterling Marlin. The first of those that did pit is Fox yeah, Tracks. Green, green, green. That's the number of eight, number eight, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Here we go. Those top six cars have about 12 laps on their tires versus those fresh tires now on the other 10 cars. And Sterling got off to a good start that time. He didn't have the problem he had earlier. Well, I, as I say that, Larry, he goes up the hill down there. He's going to lose all those positions he gained by staying out almost. It seems that way, but I tell you, when you stay out on those hot tires, you better have them cleaned up when you come time to go green rate, green flag racing. Now he's going. He looks like he's only going to lose one position to Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. Got a big-time battle back there, I believe, for fifth between Rusty Wallace in the two car, Sterling Marlin in the 40 car. That's a lap car of Elliott Sadler in the 38 in front of him. Now you're going, what are the whoa, lap Whoa, 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 Sterling. Gosh, oh, money, he got that thing up the hill. I thought he was going to get into Rusty. I'm sorry, guys. Well, those two lap cars are racing for position, even though it's 19, Casey Mears and Elliott Sadler. And here's our point leader, the 17 of Kenseth, coming back yeah. into it. Sterling's car just had that look of like, I can't stop it. I'm on the slide. It's going to get into something. Jeff Gordon went to the high side at one and two and gained some ground on Bobby Labonte that time. He's going to do it again here. in four, Mike. And look at Matt Kenseth on the bottom. He may get two positions here. He got a heck of a run in the middle of three and four. White flag this time pulls up beside the man he's battling in the points, Dale Earnhardt Jr. White flag side by side. Junior's giving him nothing. Boy, Michael's right there with them too. I mean, that's a great, that's a, that's, mm, that's going to get interesting down here in terms of one. Junior takes Kenseth right downstairs. I think Michael's going to get a run on both of them right here. Nah, he can't quite fall. He's going to get by Junior. Oh, Junior. Boy, Junior had to back up. Yeah, he, he pushed up yep. off the two over there and had to get up out of the gas. Happens all the time. And Michael had the draft from Kenseth rather than being up behind his teammate. The low line was written better for him. Yeah, Junior's going to go from fourth to seventh. Oh, trouble back straight away. A lot of smoke car around. Several I think cars. it's Mike Wallace. Here we come to the flag. Checker is out. Kurt Busch will celebrate Ford's century of Ford Motor Company with a victory at Michigan.